Eric Jones brought home a third place finish with a strong run at Kansas this weekend, but perhaps we shouldn't be at all surprised by it. In fact, while no one was looking, Eric Jones has quietly had a really solid second half of the season. This weekend's performance was not a fluke at all. I don't think that there's any way around the fact that 2023 has been a disappointing year for Legacy Motor Club, but throughout the second half of the season, the team has actually quietly had a resurgence with Eric Jones and the rotating cast of drivers in the 42 car since the release of Noah Gregson. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about Noah Gregson's season, because it was nothing short of disastrous, with 5 DNFs in 21 races, 0 top 10 finishes, an average finish of 28th, and a departure from the team following an incident on social media. But, if you want a realistic assessment of where the team is at, then look at the season that Eric Jones has had. The first 16 races of the season were not kind to Jones. The 43 team had just two top 10 finishes and an average finish of 22nd, but in the 12 races since then, Jones has completely turned things around. Since Nashville, he scored five top 10 finishes in 12 races, and a pair of 11th place finishes at Atlanta and New Hampshire, so it was very nearly 7 in 12 races. He's gone from 30th to 25th in the point standings. He's completed all but 2 laps in those 12 races, and he has an average finish of 14th. Actually, if you remove his two back-to-back -back rough weeks on the road courses at the Indy Road Course and Watkins Glen, he would have had an average finish of 10th. Also, he's riding a streak of 25 consecutive races without a DNF. Many people pointed out that Jones had a very impressive season in the 43 car last year. He had three top fives, 13 top tens, a finish of 18th in the final point standings, and an average finish of 16th. And, of course, that big win in the Southern 500 last year. But if you extrapolate his numbers over the last 12 races to a full season, he's actually been better in the last 12 races than he was in that highly successful 2022 season. Over the course of a 36 race season at this pace, he'd have three top fives, matching his total from last year. He'd have 15 top tens, beating his total from last year. And he would actually have 30 lead lap finishes, beating his total of 23 from last year. One thing that actually makes this turnaround even more impressive is the fact that it has already been announced that Legacy Motor Club will be leaving Chevy for Toyota in 2024, which means that the amount of data and information they're receiving from RCR, from whom they currently get their technical support, and their Chevy compatriots is likely being limited at this point in anticipation of their departure. The first half of the season may have been disappointing, but this quiet turnaround is a true testament to the talent of Eric Jones and the great effort that Legacy Motor Club has put into turning things around. But the turnaround isn't just limited to Jones and the 43 team. I've already mentioned that Noah Gragson's time in the 42 car was nothing short of disastrous, but since his departure, the rotating cast of drivers that Legacy Motor Club has had in the 42 car has actually looked a lot better, particularly Carson Hosevar, who has been in the 42 car each of the last two weeks and will be in the car next week at Bristol. He's posted finishes of 17th and 20th at Darlington and Kansas, which is actually pretty impressive when you consider that he did that with a team that has struggled for most of the season, and he only had one previous Cup Series start. There has been a bit of a debate about whether or not Josevar should jump straight from the trucks to the Cup Series, and I've actually become a believer in that thought. I do hope that he gets a seat next year, and it looks like he's being talked about for the 77 car at Spire. Josh Berry has also gotten two starts in the 42 car, and unfortunately got caught up in an early wreck at Michigan that ended his day after he was put in the car on short notice but he did pick up a 22nd place finish at Daytona the following week. I actually wouldn't be surprised if he gets a couple of more starts in that car before the end of the season. 
Mike Rockenfeller ran the 42 car at the two road course races at Indianapolis and Watkins Glen and finished 24th and 19th in those two races. So since Gregson's release, the 42 car's average finish has actually been 23rd, up five positions from Gregson's 28th place average finish. The car has actually finished on the lead lap in four of the six races since Gregson left, matching Gregson's own mark of four lead lap finishes in 21 starts. So Legacy Motor Club has been on the rise for a little while now, and I expect them to continue to build on that into 2024. As mentioned earlier, the team announced at the beginning of May that they would be switching to Toyota in 2024, so I find it hard to believe that RCR and other Chevy teams are keeping them in the loop on all their data, and obviously, they are not getting that support from Toyota just yet. So imagine what they could do with some serious factory support from Toyota in 2024. It's clear that Toyota has already taken a healthy interest in investing in the future through Legacy Motor Club, setting them up with the current Xfinity Series frontrunner John Hunter Nemechek to drive the 42 car in 2024. Nemechek seemed to be on track for a Cup Series seat at Joe Gibbs Racing, but Toyota said that they want him in a Cup Series car now and managed to get him to Legacy. Nemechek is a huge score for the team. He's talented, and it wouldn't shock me at all if he finds himself in victory lane next year. Going into 2024 with new support from Toyota and the talented driver lineup of Eric Jones and John Hunter Nemechek, I am expecting Legacy Motor Club to be roughly on the same level as 2311 racing as far as on-track performance goes. I expect multiple victories out of Jones next year, and as I said, it wouldn't surprise me at all if Nemechek found victory lane too. I know, I know. I said last year that the team had a bright future ahead of it, but clearly there were some growing pains that needed to be endured first. But I think that the performance is clearly coming, and the team's future is just as bright as I previously thought. Well, that's what I've got for today. I may end up having to make a video on John Hunter Nemechek's career of risk-reward and betting on himself, because it truly is something to be admired. Anyway, be sure to let me know what you think about all of this in the comments. Please like the video to boost it in the algorithm, and thanks for watching.